starring Signa Hasso in I Count the Days on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Before we begin our play, let me make a suggestion. When you buy rainwear and sportswear, make sure that their water and stain repellency are durable, that the protection won't come out the first time you wash or clean your garment. You can make sure by looking for the DuPont Z-Land tag. Z-Land durable repellent finish, unlike ordinary water repellent, doesn't disappear at the laundry or dry cleaner. Z-Land is one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's play is as simple and glowing as the evening star and as true and lasting. Here's what happened when a G.I. met a refugee Dutch girl in occupied Germany and opened not only her eyes to the future, but her heart as well. The DuPont Company presents I Count the Days, starring lovely Signa Hasso as Johanna on the Cavalcade of America. I sit on this high German hill, overlooking a long German valley. I think of Ruth in the Bible, who stood in tears amidst the alien corn. Sometimes I want to run home to Holland, like a child to a mother. But then, then I hear the brass tongue of the bell on the old German schoolhouse. And it says a hundred things to me. It says words like, Remember? Remember? And when I'm alone on the hill like this, thinking of him, the bell says, Even now, with the war over, there is still no peace. Sort of, Marie. Why don't you be like this Dutch girl? She has suffered much, yet she is not complaining. We are lucky to be on a train instead of walking the roads tonight. Lucky. <laughs> she does not know the meaning of suffering. Look at her young face. The train is stopping. We have examination by the military. They probably want to see our papers. A pretty face is passport enough. Soldiers are coming aboard. Americans. Yesterday, German soldiers. Today, American soldiers. They are all alike. Keep quiet. Everybody, do not speak. Only answer questions. Restez tranquille. Ne dites rien. Je ne dirai rien. Okay, everybody, and here, stand up. Hands high like this. Shall I keep this rod on him, Sarge? Forget the G-man stuff, Gordon. Just keep your eyes open. Uh, quiet, everybody. Quiet, I said. This is the Displaced Persons Center under American military government. Americanische Militärische Regierung. You understand? Before leaving the train, we have to examine everybody's travel papers, passports. Vo papier. Here are papira. Hold this flashlight, good. Okay. Anybody here speak English? Mm. Oh, now, one at a time, bring your papers to me. You. Yeah, you, big boy. Come and see here. That rainy night last summer on a dark train in Germany, I first saw Steve. He stood at the end of the car like a judge and called up one person at a time. There were perhaps a dozen people, some of the eternally hunted, the frightened backwasher battles, the refugees. And my heart began to beat in my throat like a hammer. And called me to the light. You next, boy, Lane. Don't be bad. We'll just step right up here. Get up a pier up for a light. Well, I, uh, I, I have them here in my coat. If I, if I can find them. Hey, she speaks English. What's your name? Johanna Verbal. Johanna. Yes. What does that name make you? Dutch. I have learned English in Amsterdam at the State University. I also speak French and German. Your home in Amsterdam? No, Rotterdam. I'm up there for four years now. Going home to your family? 
I have no family. They are all gone in the war. Could be a phonus balona slick chick, huh, Steve? Could be. Where are your papers? They're in here. Here, I put them here in the lining of my coat for safeness. Here you are, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. Hold the light here, Gordon. Johanna Fabau, Dutch, sent to Germany, 1940. Hospital work, age 24. It's the first nice passport picture I've ever seen. Yeah, she's really stacked. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Paper's okay, Miss Fabau. Oh, thank you, sir. Just a minute. Lift the light, Gordon. Oh, please. Oh, please, I, I can't see with the light in my face. Why didn't you say you spoke English before when I asked? Oh, because I... I... Oh, how do you say how it? How do you say it? Well, I... I don't remember the word. Unfriendly, I... is that the word? No, no, not unfriendly. Well, certainly not friendly. She's mooching, Steve, <laughs> scrounging around. Well, I don't know those American words, but I I know what you mean, and it isn't true. Are you hungry? Yes, I'm yeah. hungry. There's a box of K-rations. Food. I don't want it. Give it to the others. Mama mia, a tough guy. Gee, you'd think we were fraternizing the way she says no. <laughs> That was Steve last summer, with a war feeling still in his voice. And maybe in his mind some loneliness for home. I only knew I disliked him almost as much as if he were a German soldier. How was I to know that night he was not a military policeman like the Gestapo, but a man of understanding. <laughs> the displaced person center. Thousands of refugees standing in line for examinations, for shelter, for food, for everything. Miss Fabau? Oh. What do you want? Take it easy, kid. We're looking all over for you. I have my papers in order. I know, I, I know. Look, the captain wants to see you. Come on. Yeah, but my place in line. I'll save I... it right this way. Now. But I waited here for Listen, hours. Kid, I'm nervous in the service. I don't blame you for being jumpy. Just try to relax a little. But you said my, my papers... Yeah, wait a minute. Captain... Here she is, sir. Oh, glad you found her, Sergeant. Miss, uh... Verbau. Johanna Verbau. Miss Verbau, the sergeant told me about you. I did nothing. Please, I, I... How do you say no smoking in French? In French? Uh... De pas de fumée. In Dutch. Rochum verboten. Danish? Rochum verboten. She's hired, Sergeant. Miss Verbau, before these folks burn the building down, spell all those words out for the sign painter. <laughs> That was how Steve got me my first work with the Americans. I was an interpreter. Four years, I was like a slave in Hitler's Reich, a Dutch girl with a number. And suddenly, suddenly out of the sky, I became a person. I was working by myself to help people like me. But that was only the beginning. Johanna? Oh. You ought to learn to take it easy, kid. The war is over. Take my word for it. <laughs> yes, I know, but in my mind, I... know, I... the memory lingers on. It takes time. Look, here's your pay. Money? For me? Sure, payday. You work for Uncle Sam now. The eagle screamed today. The eagle what? The eagle screamed today. Everybody got paid. You too. <laughs> the eagle screamed today? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go now, Steve? In here. I want you to meet the supply sergeant. Well, hubba, hubba. Hi, Jackson. Are you uh, coming to trade her in on something, Stevie? You know Miss Verbal. Sure, the beautiful new interpreter. Hi. Uh, hello, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Jackson's not my real name, Miss Verbal. But Steve... Oh, I'll explain it later, Your Honor. Look, uh, pal, you know those German military nurse uniforms we liberated from that Wehrmacht depot? Yeah? I know a tailor who... Yeah, I know. Uh, you want a size... Uh, uh, 14, maybe, huh? Stop looking at her like that, Wolf. You're drooling. For size, Stevie, size. How can I judge size? Size 14. And a pair of shoes and some stockings. I'll judge the size. Now, Steve, shoes and stockings. Listen, like... Jackson, could be you want my Jeep tonight? Yeah, could be. Yeah, I, I do need a little assistance in the transportation department tonight. Then give him this stuff, Jackson. Give. No shoesy, no Jeepy. <laughs> <laughs> kind of English, and all the time joking. I could hardly understand what was going on around me. It was a whole new world. 
After living in a deep, dark cellar, they threw open the doors and let the sun shine. <laughs> Festival at the displaced person center. Who is the next thing you see? He's my idea. Countryman of yours, kid. Really? From Rotterdam. Oh. It's the only way in Ethel Sweet Forest. Again, hey, Hepwell. What did he say, Johanna? Haven't heard this since I was a little girl. It's called it's called I Remember Holland. Listen. Can pay Hepwell. It brings me back. I remember the kitchen in our house on the point stuck near the river. It would be raining when I came home from school and... And what, Johanna? Oh, I... I would sit in the kitchen by the stove, listening, listening to the rain on the roof. And my two big brothers, Pete and Eric, they would come home laughing and arguing. And I would help my mother set the table. And my father would come home from working. Steve, I... I can see it now. Just how it was. They must have been a lot like my family back home. But they're gone, Steve. All of them are gone. I see so alone. Oh, forgive me, Steve. I don't mean to cry. Go ahead and cry, Johanna. I know it helps. Oh, Johanna, you're not alone anymore. You have friends. I... Oh, yes, I... Steve, you have been so good to me. It's... It's just the music of home and... and the realization of what the past four years have done. Don't look back, Johanna. Try to look ahead. What is there ahead for anyone in Europe, Steve? There's the future. The future? You Americans, sir, you say that word so easily. So can you if you try. Just think of the brand new tomorrow. In Europe, the tomorrow looks blacker than yesterday. Well, that's up to you, to all of us. There can be a good tomorrow for Europe and the rest of the world. But we've got to start working for it today. You and I. Everybody. Sounds maybe true. But there's nothing I can do. There's a lot you can do. I talked with the captain this afternoon. He says the colonel has something cooking for you right now. Something cooking? What, does he want us to go to dinner or something? No. No, he's got something very important to tell you. It, it's a... Well, it's a new job. A job that will mean a lot for the future. Sounds exciting, but I'd rather he tell you all about it. Will you go see him? Well, yes, I think so. Good. I'll even drive you there. You mean in your little jeep? Jeep, not jeep. Oh, very well. I'll go if you say so. Good. Johanna, don't forget. The past we can do nothing about but we can make the future. The future? I like the way the word sounds when you say it, Steve. The future. You're listening to Signa Hasso as Johanna and Elliot Lewis as Steve in I Count the Days on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our second act begins, Johanna learns that the American military government plans to open a school in this little German village, and they want her to teach the German children the principles of democracy. Oh, Steve, that sounds very exciting. That work should be so interesting. And important, too. Right now, youngsters who have money are being taught by their former Nazi teachers. That's bad. Why, of course it is. Youngsters who have no money get no schooling. That's bad, too. So it's up to people like you to teach the German children the democratic ABCs. Me, a teacher. Think of that. And doing something so important. You've come a long way since that night I first saw you. Steve. Why are you so kind to me? Oh, how should I know? You, you help people for a hundred reasons. Why do you look at me like that? I may as well tell you the truth, Johanna. I... I think I fell in love with you from the first day. I 
went to work in the school. By some magic, the Americans brought him books. The windows were fixed. Desks, chairs, tables, benches, everything. And finally came the great day. The school was open. Good morning, Kinder. We went to Fort Anfangen. Elsa, you begin first with today's lesson. Stand up and read, please. We must have freedom from fear if all men are to to have equal opportunity. All for... men, Fräulein Brava? Equal opportunity? Yes, Heinrich. All men. I do not believe it. Heinrich, you must not interrupt. Go on, Elsa, please. To live with hope for themselves and their children. <laughs> Who was George Washington? He was the first American Fuhrer. <laughs> no. No, no, Kurt. Listen while I explain again. One of the world's most important dates was 1454. That's when Gutenberg invented the printing press. <laughs> Heinrich. And, and men could tell the whole world their, their new ideas. Thank you, Ernst. Thank you. Heinrich? He's crazy, Fräulein. Stand up, please, Heinrich. Uh, what do you think are the important dates in history? 1919, the Versailles Treaty. 1933, when Hitler took power. And April 21st, 1945, when the Americans took our town by treachery. He was a leader in the Hitler Youth, Fräulein. And even now, with the war over, he tries to carry on Hitler's ideas. Every day he tries to discipline all of us. And if we don't join his movement, he punishes us. I'll take care of you on the way home, Kurt. And you too, Ernst. Or anybody else here. Heil Hitler! To see they're impossible, some of those children. Their minds are twisted, crippled. Sure they are. That's why they need you. Yeah, but this boy Heinrich, the Hitler youth leader, I've tried everything with him. And the stiffer the punishment, the more he says to the others, see? You see how Paul Amber Barr persecuted me? Now, take me? it easy, Johanna. If you lose your self-confidence now, oh, you but... put yourself right back to that night in the railroad car. But, Steve, what can I do? Let me come to school with you tomorrow. I've got an idea. Oh, but... Fräulein Verbau has told all of you about democracy. Now she wants to show you how it works. Heinrich? Come up to the front of the room, please. Ja, Fräulein? Heinrich. Clicking your heels and standing at attention are not necessary. This is a school, not a barracks. Now listen, all of you. I am not going to punish Heinrich. You are. You are responsible for him because he's one of you. I will get them one at a time after school. Not if they stick together, you won't, Heinrich. Class, that is the first lesson in democracy. Alone you may be afraid of Heinrich, and he gets his strength from your fear. But united, you have the strength. We are going to hold a democratic trial. The whole class will be the jury. You are not fair. Right now, we prepare by our rules, Heinrich, not yours. In a democracy... The laws are made and enforced by the majority of the people. Now, as I call upon you, speak only the truth and have no fear. You're the first to witness Elsa. Stand up, please. Yes, Fräulein. Has Heinrich ever compelled you and the others to say or do anything against your will? Yes, Fräulein. When there are no American soldiers, Heinrich makes a salute and say, Hi, Hitler. And if you don't do what he tells you, he punishes you. So Heinrich said to me, even if we did lose the war, our enemies are still the same, aren't they? I asked them, do we have to fight all the time? When I wouldn't say how Hitler, Heinrich knocked me down and beat me. And when I said Hitler was wrong, he called me a non-Aryan pig and painted a swastika on my forehead. Heinrich, 
You've heard several witnesses. Do you have anything to say? Yes. They are all against me in here now. But wait. I'll get even. Clark, Heinrich and I and this American soldier will go out of the room. When you have your judgment ready, we'll return. Sit down, Heinrich. Ernst? Yes, Fräulein? What did the class decide? Six vote to leave him alone. Two say nothing. Eighteen vote to keep him out of school one month. If he wants to come back, we will take him. If he makes trouble a second time, we will expel him. The majority rules. You may finish out today, Heinrich. Our second lesson for today is the Bill of Rights. Summer days walk by slowly, like a procession of altar boys. Then sooner than we thought, autumn came running down the hill. One golden afternoon in late October, Steve and I came up to this hill overlooking the town. Steve was reading a long letter from his mother back home. What will mother write, Steve? Oh, about the family. They're painting the house. My sister's little boy starting kindergarten. Trees are turning brown. My room is empty. And when am I coming home? How long are you away from home, Steve? Seems like half a lifetime. Three years. It'll be Thanksgiving time soon. The whole family gets together. Yes. Yeah. Soon you'll be going home, Steve. Why talk about it? Why not? I don't want to leave you alone, Johanna. Oh, I won't be alone. I have friends. Jackson, Gordon. Cut it out, I mean it. I mean it. Okay, okay. Steve, you're homesick, I know. You're away from America a long time. You've been away from home even longer. You remember you taught me a word? The future? Well, I have confidence in myself now. My ma- my grandmother, it was. She used to tell me how if you put a seed inside a stone, it will grow and grow until the stone cracks in two. Well, Germany is a stone, and my school is a seed. Life will go on for me, Steve. Don't sell me a dream, Your Honor. No dream, only the truth. Oh, we... We have seen too much to talk the chocolate candy kind of love. Johanna, I'm... Don't make any promises, Steve. When we come together again, that will be enough. Johanna. Steve. Oh, Steve. Steve. While you are gone... I'll come today. Winter is here now. And the sky is a low iron roof. Steve is home in America. But in my mind I see him here. Walking up the hill to my school, smiling a little sideways at me. I remember everything, every little word. And I count the days like coins. The future, I think to myself. I've learned to say it like an American says it. The future. Yes, dear. When we come together again, life will begin. Our star, Signa Hasso, will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gain Whitman.
The woods this time of year are hushed. Stand still with the trees around you going up to the sky as tall cathedral columns. And it's so quiet that the rustle of a single drying leaf is loud. Just such a grateful, reverent hush as that of the autumn woods fills our hearts as we approach this Thanksgiving day of 1945. There is much, much indeed for which we all thank God. Thanksgiving Day is so tightly woven into the pattern, the very fabric of America, that the mere mention of its name calls up sights and scents and sounds that are identical memories in us. Autumn leaves are part of it, yes. Maple leaves of trembling, fragile gold foil and crimson oak and perfume like no other of leaves burning. Burning in little fires that are warm spots of color along the blue curb in the dust. We think of crackling brown turkey and sweet potatoes and cranberry sauce. We do not give thanks alone. The curtains of time draw a little apart, and we are joined at table by grandfather and grandmother, wearing clothes that look a little strange to us. And by men and women in clothing much stranger still, men in homespun and pewter buckles, carrying bell-mouthed muskets, the pilgrims. It is no miracle that the pilgrims are with us, so much a part of us, for a pilgrim is one who journeys to a sacred place. And in this land dedicated to democracy, all of us are pilgrims, marching slowly and painfully, with many a stumble, towards that distant sacred place where all men shall be free and brothers. Our beloved nation has just come through a frightening time of danger and heartbreak, more than our nation was threatened. Democracy itself was under fire. The inspired way of life, which grants infinite value 